Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today in the NASCOM product conference session. I'm uh, Raj, Chief Product Officer from Bhavan Cybertech. We have with us Jay Prakash Vijayan, fondly called Jay Vijayan, founder and CEO of Techion, ex Tesla, VMware, Oracle, and an executive entrepreneur, inventor, board member, and investor. Jay has revolutionized the disruptive way the auto retailing and technology services. Techion, founded by Jay, has raised in the last funding round 250 million capital led by Helicon Capital, Durable Capital, and several tech groups across the US. And the latest funding round values Techion at over 3.5 billion, which has nearly tripled from over a billion three years ago. And the flagship platform of Techlo has managed more than 170,000 car sales and have serviced over a million vehicles with close to 2 billion transactions on the platform. These are phenomenal statistics when you look up back from a startup, which is little over five years in the future. So, Jay, it's a pleasure to meet up with you. And uh, we'd like to start with your story from a training company in Chennai to the CIO of Tesla and now a unicorn entrepreneur. Share with us your key learnings, the other startups can draw inspiration from you. Thank you, Raj. Uh, it is a pleasure being here. Thanks for the opportunity. Good to you know see you again. Yeah, I'd love to share um, you know snippets of my story. I know we have a short time frame, so I'll try, try to keep it uh, concise. And please keep me honest if you need to jump in and uh, you know um, uh, move things uh, move things forward. Uh, so my journey has been, um, I would say, a great uh, experience from, like I said, very very early days. Um, I was born in uh, born in Chennai, um, studied uh, my bachelor's in uh, Presidency College, did my master's in uh, AC Tech uh, in the Anna University uh, campus. And then we had a, a training center. Uh, my, uh, you know, um, dad had started it, but I was pretty much um, running most of it. It was life experience. Um, we had uh, our successes, uh, we have our failures, um, very early days, so there was a lot to learn. I was still young. Um, the world was very different at that time. Uh, I'm sure you probably remember some of it. Uh, there is no concept of, uh, you know, uh, venture capitalists or private equity or, uh, for that matter, uh, you know, IPOs are very, very minimal to pretty much um, not my, uh, nil, right, from a tech company perspective. So, <clears throat> Uh, it was a it was a great learning experience. So I felt uh, one one thing in the journey, uh, some of these tough, uh, I would say, phases in life. Um, my um, the view to it is at that time it is tough, but always there is a learning. Um, so that's uh, looking back for me. Um, every phase of the life, from my you know time in Chennai, uh, you know doing a training center to um, then um, working uh, in Singapore first, then coming to the US, joining my first job at Oracle. Uh, every phase of the life uh, had its learning. Um, every, um, I would say, aspects of that itself, like not only in the product, not only in the management, uh, but uh, dynamics of um, business as well. So one thing I think I, I, I fondly always look for in people is every single person I get an opportunity to work with, um, I, I try to always look what can I learn from this person, um, right? Uh, and of course, uh, what can I contribute? But more than that, what can I learn, right? Um, I tell this to, uh, I've mentioned in, in other interviews, but I, I, I um, frequently talk about this to my kids and I also talk about this to my uh, team as well, that you know, your, your own lifetime will not be enough to learn from your own mistakes. Uh, you have to learn from other people's mistakes also, um, or to most part, that is the case. So because uh, you make your own mistakes, but you also look at what others are doing and uh, see how you can apply some of these things to say, okay, I need to do this differently because they've already tried and didn't go through. Some of these, if you have enough conviction, you can say, okay, I understand why it didn't go through for them, but I need to do it differently so that I can succeed. So that journey from Oracle, then VMware, right timing, right from their IPO, I would say I was being, I've been fortunate um, to make some of these tough decisions at the right time because moving from Oracle to VMware um, was um, not an easy decision, but moving from, again, VMware to Tesla also was not an easy decision. Again, today it's a no-brainer, uh, right? As you could say, if someone gets a job at Tesla, they could probably drop everything and um, go for it. 
it was a different uh, different world at that time it's the same company but uh, not uh, you know proven from a success perspective so you need to look for i definitely felt they are on to something something really big um of course uh, clearly um not in my wildest dream i imagined uh, it will be this successful but i truly believed uh, what um, elon was doing so it was a um, from that perspective it continued um, from my chennai time to uh, oracle uh, here in their headquarters in redwood shores then vmware then tesla and then um, leaving tesla and starting techion in 2016 again for me it's about um, every part of the learning and i i, I learned so many incredible things uh, even at tesla working with elon some of these are life experiences to apply uh, in the in in your next uh, phase of your life next uh, you know journey uh, phase of the journey in your career as well so uh, applied a lot of these things at techion have been useful and i have my own learnings at uh, techion as we grow as we grew from really um, a company that uh, was valued like you know um, early days uh, 10 million dollars to 3.5 billion dollars today i still believe we are in very early stages of our growth we have a, a long way to go and we went through um, our ups and downs uh, in early days and of course we're going to go through the next phase of our journey is about how do we scale from being a 3.5 billion dollar company to you know uh, 10 billion dollar company 20 billion dollar 30 billion dollar in growth right so continue to grow so that is kind of in in a, in a nutshell um, has been my journey uh, if there is any questions that you think will be useful for uh, you know your audience i'd love to um, get into the details absolutely uh, before we get into take on like many look back at your experience in tesla as ceo right working closely with uh, uh, elon musk right did you foresee the dizzying success that today Tesla is achieving? Right? What do you think other automakers can learn from Tesla? Yeah, uh, great question. I think the biggest uh, I would say is um, two two things. Uh, fundamentally, I mean there are a lot of lot of level of details, but the big picture is one is uh, you know innovation, um, and then second is um, bringing things together. Um, seamlessly one you know converged vision to execution i think that part is an important one um, where how do you bring things together how do you make decisions um, that may not be the easiest decisions to make it's not a no brainer to switch as you know from ice to ev but in the context of course the existing automakers have a lot more legacy and complexity uh, to solve uh, it's not an easy journey but at the same time, sometimes making tough decision as leaders um, is such an important uh, thing where you have this existing, uh, you know, machine that continues to bring revenue, make cars, you sell cars, you bring in revenue through the network. But how do you transform this to where the world is going in the next, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years? I think that's not an easy one. That is where, as I said, you constantly innovate converge your decisions to make some tough decisions on transformation from where uh, they are today to where they need to go. Uh, I think some other bigger manufacturers have already started making those decisions and um, they're uh, uh, clearly announcing very clearly what they are doing, uh, but they need to start um, really execute on that and show results. I think it will be it's a benefit for you know the market, benefit for the industry and benefit for the consumers as well. Absolutely. That, that, that's a great answer. Jay, you have built one of the world's uh, newest unicorns, the fastest one to reach to today's dollar valuation, uh, helping create seamless experience for, for buying a car to managing its inventory standards. I take you on your building, your ARC or automatic retail crowd that helps in transparency at every level of automobile. Uh, how do you bring uh, these diverse uh, stakeholders together, especially in a tough sector like automotive? Yeah, um, I, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a great question. <clears throat> so, so fundamental the way I looked at it is early days there were quite a bit of questions, um, you know, barriers to say you know it cannot be solved. It's not easy. You're absolutely right. There is varied amount of uh, you know automotive brands. Um, there is retailers um, in uh, you know dealers uh, to most part, and then there is uh, you know end consumers what they expect. Uh, the way I thought about this and I felt is end of the day, consumers decide where they want to shop and how they want to shop. Okay. 
um you know in 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 the near term they may do even though they may not like certain things they may continue to do but they may slowly gravitate to where they get what they want to get which is um the best experience the the convenience um the best convenience for them to you know shop transparency and trust these three are fundamental right so we all are consumers you are a consumer i am a consumer on day to day life we drive cars we go shop so the fundamental thing is what do we expect um we shop in amazon right um we buy apple products or samsung products some of these give very seamless experience um they give the transparency they give the trust and consumers have shown over and over again you're ready to pay whatever it takes to get that many times cost is not a factor or even if it is a factor it's at the low end not on the high end so um i think i felt that needs to change because all of the new car companies um right starting from tesla um, all of the other ev companies that are coming in and then on the used car space as well there are a lot of new innovative companies all they are doing is if you think step back and think all they are doing is just giving that experience and convenience to consumers so why why not consumers get that in every part of their life basically even if they go to a dealership if they shop online from a brand website of a car manufacturer why can't we bring that together so that way it's a benefit for every consumer then if it becomes a benefit for the consumer then it becomes a benefit for the you know OEM brands it becomes a benefit for a dealer so the whole ecosystem has a win win situation so why do we why do we have these silos like we have today where consumers don't like the experience <clears throat> dealers continue to do the business but the new business is continuing to gravitate towards all of these new companies so why do we why can't we provide that experience in one single platform so that be it a new company be it an existing brand be it a dealer consumers can get the best best experience they want so consumers have to have the choice whatever way they want to shop they can shop completely online from their home and or they can do a hybrid they can do all of the shopping but go to a you know retail center or a dealership to experience the product and that's the key the key is today the fun part of the whole buying experience is experiencing your product if it's a car sure. as you know the reason even apple has stores still people go to apple stores even though they can order and get the phone online many people do that also but many people still go when there's a new apple product they go to the store they experience it they check everything sometimes they buy it at the store sometimes they go back to home and order it online <clears throat> right so consumers have to be given that choice of whatever way they want to shop today that is not the case so that's what techion and techion automotive retail cloud is providing and that is how we deliver to the market it's not been a easy journey but we see absolutely phenomenal validation now we have all of our oem partners multiple oem partners uh, we have integrated with more than 30 brands and we have several retailers across the country in the us and in canada um, have uh, you know rolled out techion platform and consumer review has been also extremely positive so we are really in this journey of bringing that vision to life how do you bring that um, you know seamless win win um situation for oems dealers and consumers so that's the vision and that's what we have been working hard and we um, we are thrilled about the validation we are getting from the industry both from our manufacturers from you know dealers retailers and uh, consumers absolutely and i think like feeling it and buying it and also have the flexibility of doing online shopping right i mean today right. i mean mix brand of buyers need all that flexibility <laughs> Or exactly technology can bring it absolutely correct yeah absolutely and um, today jay like a uh, number of startups in india are building a lot of cloud based platforms right uh, we have more than uh, 10000 startups i mean the numbers have been increasing uh, by the year right for diverse sectors like retail logistics healthcare so what would you advise entrepreneurs building such platforms especially for niche segments right it could be on partnerships or technology choice that you make for those platforms go to market models because you have gone through all of them very very uh, i would say no stress mode for the first few years and then suddenly you started erupting out bigger right i'm sure you had a lot of strategy around it a lot of entrepreneurs would love to hear from you yeah so yeah i think um uh i mean i'm in um 
I went through that journey myself and going through it now. Uh, I have incredible respect for entrepreneurs. It's not a you know easy journey. Um, not for everyone. Um, rarely there is an easy journey, but many times people may not have the visibility into what hard work and what went through as part of their journey. Uh, but as you know, you're bringing value to um, an ecosystem around you, right? It could be your consumers, it could be your partners, it could be you know customers. So the key for me, I the way I thought about it from um, and it's been it's been working well so far uh, is. It's all about the value. So how do you how do you bring value to your ecosystem? So you need to have as an entrepreneur, I felt um, that good level of accountability is important um, because sometimes I've also seen in my journey, I've invested in many, many companies as well. Um, from my personal side, I've advised startups and on the board of few companies, uh, including public companies. The, the thing is some of the entrepreneurs, if you think about, um, Seeing all of the successes and exits and MNAs and IPOs, um, there are a small percentage always um, get attracted by the wrong thing. Um, basically, what I mean by that is they start a startup in the in a, in a clearly in the mindset of like, okay, how soon can I exit? How can I position the product to sell it to someone? Right? So when I say sell sell the company in a, over a period of time. So not everyone, but really wrong goals, uh, which I felt um, is not the right goals for you to. The key is all other things will follow. If you think about with your product and services, how do you bring value? And how do you keep increasing the value for your ecosystem and set it up right? And you make sure that you have faces in your program or in your, in your uh, journey, because not every time, as you know well, it's a balancing act. Not every time you're going to have funding. Um, all the, So when you have funding, then you have to make sure that you deliver the product to your um, to your consumers. And then also revenue. Uh, so it's, it's a balancing act between your investors, your employees, your customers. Uh, so that that's a constant thought process to increase. Sometimes when you want to deliver quickly to your consumers, you may end up burning a lot more capital um, and you may run out of capital, which is a big risk for any startup, right? Today market is really, really strong, which is good, but not all the time it's going to be this way. So you need to be prepared for ups and downs as a startup, not be faced. Of course, it's going to be a tough journey only, but um, you have to make sure that your long-term picture, long-term vision is very clear. And you can take small steps to get there. Not all the time you need to take big, big leaps to get there. Sometimes you may have an opportunity to take a big leap to there if you have a lot more capital, but not all the time you're going to get. So the fundamental thing for, for us is tech is there to simplify complexity and bring value to the ecosystem. So I'm keeping it a bit, bit generic. As you know, well, there's so many clouds out there. There's uh, you know different technologies. Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't matter. So you can always work on the right technology to say, what are my goals to my consumers, right? Is uh, UI experience important? Is um, reliability important? Or it's a combination of both experience, uh, speed to market. There are so many aspects of it. So now set the goal to say how your product and services are going to bring value to whoever your consumers are, whoever your partners are. I think that's all about it. It's about taking that accountability and delivering value and keeping no, keep no. going in that. No, you said it absolutely right. I think as an entrepreneur, you, you always want to put, think ahead uh, with that uh, wisdom and strategy and you always uh, want to lead right from the front. Uh, yeah. one, one very important point is just, Want to touch both uh, very sure. of time. Uh, Nascon has been advocating uh, importance of building deep tech companies from India, right? Uh, and uh, you would say that the top realities of deep tech companies uh, outside of e-commerce, right? Because there's a lot of focus on e-commerce when it comes to deep tech. So, what would you advise to young entrepreneurs as well as yeah. people who are in this space? Yeah, very good question. Um, see, definitely technology is an enabler and it's evolving very fast, right? Uh, we all know this, um, in, even just uh, from a um, ML and AI perspective, a um, lot of um, evolution, uh, very, very fast. Some, I've, I've been involved with some startups who are doing phenomenally well. Of course, the big companies like Google is doing well and we've, we've implemented so many cool ML, AI. Um, end of the day, the, the thought process is um, deep tech, 
e-commerce, um, it's a combination of both. Everywhere you need to bring the right value using the right technology. Sometimes you can be so behind, but at the same time, just for the sake of using cutting edge technology, you can't go do something that may not be of value to your consumers. You can keep changing your product, which will disrupt your end consumer. So you need to make sure that you make the right decision. If you have to uh, phase it out to say, okay, I, I'll go with the technology that is available, um, even ML models and other things, and learn and evolve. Take a phase like one year down the line or two year down the line, you can always you know, refactor, but make sure that the current uh, technology you have can deliver the value and that way you can you know bring value to the ecosystem and also bring revenue uh, to to your company so um, technology is a strong enabler that we need to keep in mind sometimes also people i've seen it uh, creates a lot of anxiety because technology moves fast and i've Certainly. seen entrepreneurs uh, getting swayed in completely two different directions they'll start with something and then oh every company is doing that and they go Unnecessarily, they just go move and uh, change things, but that becomes too late for them to take the step to make that change um, because startups have shot from a time frame and um, capital and other things. So it's important to think about what technology or the right technology, do your homework, do your evaluation. The right technology that can bring value to your ecosystem is important, uh, more than just using um, a technology for the sake of because everyone else is using and how does it apply to use? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I think cloud health has been the key. Uh, I, I would say an eye for everyone that they're jumping in that. Obviously, what you said makes sense even within the choices that they're making. Uh, right. Kind of technology. Uh, one last question to you. So what's your favorite hobby? Uh, Jay, I'm, I'm sure you would be a busy man. So how do you uh, favorite? get this favorite hobby that you spend? Hobby? Oh, yeah, yeah. Most? My most favorite hobby, it used to be different before. Um, reading is the most uh, favorite, I would say. Mm, outside of tech, um, this is more for me to take my mind off. I do read technology based on you know anything that new comes up. That's my day to day time. Uh, my nighttime relaxation, anytime I go to bed, doesn't matter what time. It could be 1 a.m., it could be 10 p.m., it could be 2 a.m. I always go to bed with a book. Um, it's Kindle, that's easy. So reading is something always helps me to take my mind off on all the stress. And usually I try to read about something outside of work in the in late night. Even if I wake up, say, suddenly 2 a.m., I didn't get sleep properly thinking about something. I always pick up my Kindle and start reading a book. And then I go back to sleep within 50 to 30 minutes or sometimes in five minutes. So reading is, uh, I feel it's, uh, it really has helped me learn about a lot of things, everything from food to breathing exercises to all kinds of things. Um, so that's uh, my number one, I should say, hobby. Fantastic. So it's, it, it's been a great session in fact, today, and I'm sure your experience would motivate millions of our young entrepreneurs globally and in India as well, and help more world-class products from Indians and so we are very proud of your achievements and thanks for sharing your journey with us. And best Thank wishes you. to you and uh, take you on to move your deck account and to a hectare account and be in the top 10 leagues for all the technology innovative disruptors, right? Thanks, Jay, Thank for you. your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rajan. Thank you, Nascan for uh, uh, team. Really, really appreciate the opportunity. The opportunity and uh, uh, thanks, thanks for allowing me to share, share my views and my, my story. story. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. All the best. All the best.